Good evening everyone and welcome to an Oz Cyclone Chasers update tonight, the 13th of November 2013. Once again a day late because we were out storm chasing yesterday. Uh, we have a very active stormy period over northern Australia, so let's take a look at what is going on. So courtesy of weatherzone.com.au we've got the latest uh, synoptic chart and we can see here we've got a fairly long broad trough system uh, coming from a low of about 1,007 hectopascals on the northeastern parts of Tasmania. Now that extends through um, through Queensland which has been seeing and northern New South Wales which has been seeing some uh, very uh, very stormy conditions and we've got also a fairly active jet stream in the area too so we've got a lot of instability mixed in you can see these you can see these isobars that are coming in from uh, coming in from the east northeast in that direction so all of that warm air is getting uplifted as it hits this trough line we've got fairly strong winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere they're all coming together to create some very active stormy conditions here some severe stuff happening and will continue to happen over the next few days it may even believe it or not get more active over the next four to eight days as well so uh, we haven't seen the end of this storm outbreak if you're in this part of Australia um, over the Northern Territory we're seeing a little bit of storm activity anywhere north of that trough line as well we're not seeing enough moisture coming into Western Australia yet to see the storms that are in the North Kimberley uh, make it into the gas coin and, and further inland in here there's still fairly dry air in here to, so we're seeing a lack of activity there so we take a look around the western and northern parts of Australia, we can see here fairly fairly distinct line of um, a lack of moisture there uh, right along that trough line that I showed you. Still nothing much for the Pilbara and as I said that, that moisture is not penetrating far enough southwards to, to get into this region so there's a lot of dry air still in this area. Um, we are starting to see a lot more activity here over the North Kimberley, uh, anywhere sort of to the east and north of Broome. And we're also seeing a lot of activity over the top end parts of, of the Territory. We're starting to see a lot more cloud uh, and shower and storm activity as well. Uh, we're seeing an increase in shower and storm activity over Indonesia, quite expected this time of year. We're also seeing some very good convection starting to form now over Papua New Guinea. Remember, this is an area that has been lacking convection over the past couple of weeks, so we are starting to see that. The Coral Sea is dying down as we head eastwards. The Coral Sea is dying down. That upper trough that was in here has now moved on. Uh, we're still getting a lot of wind shear out to the east, though, so there's still no chance of any uh, cyclone development or tropical low development in this area for a while. Uh, there may be, there, there, some models are hinting at a low pressure system forming over inland parts of Queensland or the eastern parts of Queensland, but that's not going to be uh, cyclonic, I guess, yeah, not tropical in nature, so to speak. So um, it is something to watch, though, as activity continues to uh, get stronger and stronger over this area over the next uh, four to eight days. Should a low pressure system form inside this area in the surface or the lower levels, even in the mid levels, uh, we're going to see enhanced rain and enhanced storm activity anywhere to the east and south uh, of that system. So uh, don't be surprised if we start to see some fairly large rainfall totals uh, if that low does start to form in a couple of days' time. Looking at the Bureau of Meteorology's four-day outlook charts, uh, we, we're seeing what, we're, what the synoptic charts showed at the moment for Thursday night. Um, as we head into Friday, we'll continue to see more of that shower and storm activity all through the regions it's been going at already. Um, no real changes there. Uh, we do start to see a high here, but it's going to be too weak to push in a southerly change through, uh, through most of Queensland. So we're going to continue to see instability here, aided by a trough system. And then as we get into uh, the weekend, Sunday uh, starting to look particularly active over southeast and central Queensland in terms terms of rain activity. We can also see some of that rain getting into the Pilbara, uh, but not quite making it to the coast to the major areas like Port Hedland, uh, Caratha, and those areas still remaining relatively uh, dry, even though you can see this rainfall from Thursday to Sunday comes in a lot further inland uh, and a lot further to the south. There still seems to be a very dry area there right on the coast and west of that trough line as well. Alright, so that's what the next few days have in store for them, for the country. 
So if we take a look at what exactly that means in terms of rainfall totals, now these are always conservative estimates and we've got a lot of rain happening here over northeast New South Wales, southeast Queensland, getting up to about as far as rocky, the um, moderate falls. So we're starting to see falls of, I guess, 15 to 15 to 50 mils in this area um, and fairly general falls too. I mean, they're, they're usually because of the widespread nature of the storm outbreak in this area, even though storm falls are very patchy, uh, the fact that there's going to be so many storms over the next few days in this region uh, is going to create a fairly generalised area of rainfall. So you'd be pretty unlucky to be missing out on this uh, fairly good rain over here anywhere to the south of I guess Rockhampton would be the cutoff point anywhere north of that the storms become very patchy we have a lot of dry air in, uh, intruding in from inland parts of Australia uh, in the mid levels so it's going to stop storm activity and that dry air continues out to the Coral Sea and therefore there's no chance of low development out there in the Coral Sea either because of that dry air uh, that dry air actually pushes north far enough into the Gulf to keep Gulf activity fairly limited as well we do have some fairly active uh, convergence area here around Weeper over the next four days and we saw that uh, blob of thunderstorm activity to the northeast of the top end over the northern parts of the Gulf. This stage not suspect for anything further to happen with that but it is a got nice little blob of storms anyway for this time of year and continuing stormy for the top end of the Territory and the North Kimberley and as I said towards the end of that four day period we start to see some of that moisture uh, streaming into the inland regions but still we're expecting most of of the Pilbara coastline to remain fairly quiet. Then it gets tricky uh, in the four to eight day period. So when we start to look from the 17th to the 20th, which is the Sunday through to the Wednesday or next week, and we do start to see uh, fairly wide ranging model predictions as to how much rain will fall here. And it all depends, I guess, on, on how the surface and upper patterns play out in that extended period. Um, so what we will see, uh, fairly clear on this, nothing happening in the Coral Sea, nothing happening in the Indian Ocean, a little bit more convection happening over Indonesia, um, and we'll start to see more moisture penetration further south in the Northern Territory. So activity won't be limited to the top end um, in the in the four to eight day period. We're going to start to see a, a bit more moisture penetration into the central and northern parts of Queensland as well, as well as the southeastern parts of Queensland going to remain very active. So look, for the next for the next week, pretty much, you've, you're going to have a, a, just an extended storm outbreak over the top end territory um, and eastern Queensland. Um, and in the four to eight day period, that'll extend northwards. Hopefully, this part here, the eastern parts of the Territory, the western parts of Queensland will see some very good storm activity and will see the sort of rainfall that um, this model is predicting because this is a large chunk of our drought declared area um, in, in this area so if we can get some rain there in the next week I'm sure people will be very happy with that. Uh, still the Pilbara coastline remaining fairly clear uh, Kimberley starting to ease off a little bit in terms of storm activity uh, mostly then confined to the northern Kimberley in that 4 to 8 day period now I do have to warn you that that four to eight day period is still subject to a fair few factors having to come into play. The, the, the next four days is, is pretty set. We know what's going to happen with a fairly high degree of confidence. The four days after that, particularly over what's going to happen in Queensland, not quite so, so sure of it all. Um, with this over the next eight days, we're going to see some very good rainfall here. Look, the, the modeling overall is tipping more than 50 millimeters for most of southeast Queensland, getting up to about rocky. Uh, and then anywhere north of that, falls petering off but still in that four to eight day period at the moment there because of that four to eight day period I should say we're going to see some fairly decent rainfall all through northern and eastern Australia looking at the more broad scale pattern in the longer term and we do see the MJO has uh, pretty well completely weakened out but it is expected to or modeled to uh, redevelop and re-strengthen and by the 13th of December be lying right in and along the western edge of the Australian region or the maritime continent and so we would be if, if this sort of model prediction goes through we would expect to see cyclone development in Australia begin to, uh, or cyclone potential I should say, begin to increase uh, around about the first to the second, more, more so the second week of December um, in 2013 is when we expect to see um, at least the potential of tropical lows and tropical cyclones forming in our region. So uh, fingers crossed that that will, along with it obviously, comes, uh, comes the rain and if it 
if it times itself correctly, uh, which is around about perfect timing there, 13th of December, if it's just entering our region by then, it can herald the onset of the monsoon trough on your weather maps and also the uh, monsoonal conditions that we would anticipate around about that time of year uh, to the end of December. So it's looking like a fairly active mid to late December but it all does hinge and you can see once again I do have to stress that this, I mean we've got outliers here that have a fairly strong MJO and we've got other outliers here that show that there is no MJO. Um, so once again the model for forecast for this is still highly doubtful but if the ensemble mean plays out we should see the onset of the North Australian monsoon around about on time at around about mid-December. So around about the end of November, we're now looking towards the last couple of days of November, we're starting to see some very strong high pressure developing here over Russia. Um, and uh, what we do, what we try to do is we try to look at these things because these influence the broad scale pattern of uh, the monsoon overall. So if we start to see very, very strong highs over Russia, uh, 1,048 isn't overly strong. We, we like to see them at around about 1,050, 60. Um, so 1048 though is reasonable enough to send a pulse of northeasterly trade winds through the South China Sea and with any luck uh, when those uh, northeasterly trade winds cross the equator they become northwesterlies and they will herald the onset of our monsoon. It's not quite as simple as that but that's something we look for is a telltale sign is a very strong high pressure system here in Russia and some of the modelling overall is now starting to suggest that we will start to see some fairly high pressures over Russia towards the end of November. That means that our monsoon, normally once those high pressures get established in this region, our monsoon tends to be one to two weeks away from when that happens. So what we see here is at the same time frame, the 29th of November, we see some fairly strong northeasterly trade winds um, pushing through. They're not quite strong enough to create a monsoon just yet, but they are starting to be encouraging. We start to see northeasterlies all through the northern hemisphere um, into this region. And as I say, once they cross the equator, they become our northwest monsoon. So it's starting to be encouraging just to see that we are starting to get northeasterly trade winds expected towards the end of November throughout this region. Obviously the one thing that does complicate patterns completely are the continual development of tropical cyclones or what we call typhoons in the northern northwest Pacific. Uh, with these things they can always disrupt this flow of northeasterlies and can delay our monsoon because of that disruption of the flow. So we do need to be mindful that the, the more typhoon activity there is in this region um, the less chance we have of those northeasterly trade winds being able to cross the equator um, at the right time. So there's a lot of factors into play but what we're seeing now is generally generally encouraging for a second week, uh, second to third week of uh, December um, start of our monsoon plus uh, the first to second week of December uh, potential for cyclone development, um, the, the start of the potential for cyclone development over particularly northwestern uh, Australia rather than the northeastern parts. But uh, so overall people we're heading into a very active period and we look forward to seeing what this active period has in store for it rain-wise, especially for uh, that four to eight day period, hopefully getting into some of those drought declared regions. We thank you for watching this update. And once again, we are still looking for uh, potential sponsorship or advertising partners. So if you do think that your business could be a right fit for us, we have a potential audience there of, uh, during severe weather events, up to 2 million people uh, tend to see our stuff. So we do have a huge potential audience. So if you, are, if you think your firm might be interested in advertising with us this chase season, uh, please contact us and we'll get back to you. Um, thanks very much for watching tonight. Our next update at this stage is planned for Friday. However, if we do go and chase, our next update will then be a Saturday. Good night.